Look closely at this robot. If I didn't tell you which one was Jebinoid F and which one was a human, you would never tell the difference. Androids are robots that closely resemble people, and some are so realistic that you might mistake them for actual humans if you don't pay close attention. While a Geminoid is a special type of android robot that doesn't just broadly resemble a human, it is meant to look like a specific person. The word Geminoid comes from the Latin word Geminus, which literally means twin. So a Geminoid would be your robot twin. If you had a Geminoid robot, it would look just like you. However, although a Geminoid might look like a person, its brain would be artificially intelligent. While, of course, future robotics could mean fully autonomous. But in the case of the original Geminoid F, which was created by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro, the mad scientist out of Osaka, Japan, the Geminoid F's brain is controlled remotely and pre-programmed to display simple behaviors like greeting hello or singing a song. Now imagine... Instead of traveling thousands of kilometers to visit some family, or say if you had to give an important performance but couldn't make it to the venue, you could send a robot, your Geminoid robot, to the event to act as you and take your place. That's what it's like to own a Geminoid robot. So what if you could use remote control or an app on your phone from all the way on the other side of the world to make it talk and behave just like you. This idea is called telepresence. Since you're teleoperating by remote control, a physical presence, your Geminoid robot, that is somewhere else, meters or miles away from you. In fact, the idea of robotic telepresence raises a lot of questions about the importance of human presence. If you have a Geminoid robot that looks just like you and behaves just like you as well, is that robot the same as you? And say, does the person listening to the robot feel like you are there? If you are the one remote controlling the robot, of course. And then let's say if you are the one remote controlling the robot, do you feel like you are there in the presence of the robot? I feel as if the original Geminoid F robots were ahead of their time. And certainly nowadays with super realistic silicon love dolls and artificial intelligent brains, which is of course technology that is being held back. Otherwise, fully autonomous robots would walk among us today in the present day. But to answer those questions in regards to telepresence and Geminoid robots, yes, I believe you would feel emotion if you are controlling your robot via an AR headset. As for the other person in the presence of your Geminoid robot, most certainly, in fact, emotion and touch. Making a robot look like a person takes the work of an artist. They have to first measure the features of a woman using a 3D scanner. They then use these measurements to produce a plastic mold of the woman's face, which is then used to cast a silicone face for the robot with near identical features for your Geminoid robot. It's no secret, the people and companies that make robots, general robots, any type of robots, often look forward to feedback or review from the public to understand how the look of a robot influences the way we feel about it and interact with it. However, although this might not be so important if you are building a industrial robotic arm to work in a factory, but it is very important if you are designing a robot that is meant to be near people. In fact, the study has its own terminology in the field of science, which is called human-robot interaction. 
For instance, if you clicked on this video and you made it this far in the video, then you must have some sort of fondness or fascination with robots. But the study and the research goes to say that the more human-like a humanoid or geminoid robot is in appearance, the more uncomfortable it tends to make people. As if, in some sense, a human-like robot is lying to us. Using the lower left part of our brain, we don't actually get to control. Which does make sense if we think about the idea of geminoid robots and remote-controlled telepresence. Even if you were aware that your real significant other or relative wasn't available for an important meeting and sent their geminoid robot twin. Personally, I would feel a little uneasy about the situation. As if your confidant was being somewhat two-faced. Definitely a lot different than the idea of a fully autonomous human-like robot with an artificial brain in its own presence. But in it in its own? That's a Gemini. Brain time. Congratulations. You made it this far in the video. What would you do if I told you you could have 25 years of good luck? And all you'd have to do is like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already. Well, what are you waiting for? Smash that like button and you'll get 25 years of good luck. And now, back to the video. The global humanoid robot market size was accounted at 1.62 billion US dollars in 2022 and it's said to be expected to reach around 28.66 billion by 2032. And if you divide 28.66 billion by 1.62 billion, which is the market size today, that's more than a 17x, 17 times the market size by 2032. When electric vehicles first became popular in the 2000s, they didn't come without people speaking up against them. Of course, here in the year 2023, we all know how that turned out. And so a lot of the negative feedback about electric vehicles was really just coming from other car manufacturers and salesmen who weren't making or selling electric vehicles at the time. Now, of course, every car manufacturer is getting into the electric EV car game. And so one of the biggest negative things people would say, and I know because I was actually selling Volkswagens back in 2006. And one of the things I would say when someone would walk into the dealership asking which was a better choice, an electric Toyota Prius or a TDI turbo diesel Jetta? Well, I would always say, and of course it's because I wanted to sell a Volkswagen, but so I would say, if you're thinking about the future and the environment, what do you think is going to happen to all the batteries in these electric cars in 30 to 40 years when they're all just sitting in a junkyard somewhere? And today, this is still very much and more so now an issue many car manufacturers deal with as they find more ways to reuse and recycle EV batteries. Okay, so what does this have to do with robots? Well, we're going to get to that because although these issues are very real, the fact is the electric EV car battery problem is still a better direction for the future by lowering global carbon emissions from gasoline powered vehicles. So if the same were said about humanoid robots, female robots, well, the answer would be simple. These robots last forever and could easily be reused and recycled. So really, it isn't even a topic. But moreover, and a humanoid robot shouldn't be questioned. It's proven that robots improve our quality of life. And following the pandemic, 
I don't think anyone can question whether or not the entire world could use some improved quality of life. In addition to assisting people with disabilities, modern technologies, including robots and AI, contribute to the development of digital health, all while, of course, contributing to society. Robots save workers from performing dangerous tasks and so much more. In fact, the only real threat humanoid robots or artificial intelligent female love dolls pose would probably be towards women. And that right there is truly the post-apocalyptic scenario. Rather than the notion of robots surpassing humans, rather the human race no longer populating. Of course, because these robotic human-like female companions were perfect and artificially intelligent with giant boobs. So surely women would need to step up, be more assertive, or rather, just more available. See what I did there? I really like that. Just be available.